Every now and then, a player is unable to hold back from openly ripping one of his teammates. Frustration and dissatisfaction settles in, and the finger pointing begins. Here are 10 times an NFL player trashed his own teammate publicly. But first, an honorable mention. Honorable mention! Broncos rookie wants targets. This list was inspired by Denver Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy after a Week 13 2020 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. Judy took to Twitter to supposedly complain about quarterback Drew Locke for not giving him enough targets? Not the best look for a rookie to complain about targets, only to delete the tweet moments later. At any rate, thank you Jerry for giving us this list idea. Now to the top 10 we go. Number 10. Antonio Gates' advice to Joey Bosa Ohio State defensive end Joey Bosa was drafted third overall by the San Diego Chargers in 2016, but the two sides failed to reach a deal on a rookie contract for several months. Even Bosa's mother Cheryl chimed in with her thoughts on the negotiations, saying, I wish we pulled an Eli Manning on draft day. That was obviously a reference to Manning forcing the Chargers to trade him after they drafted him first overall in 2004. Eli, of course, got his wish and was sent to the New York Giants. Speaking with the San Diego Union Tribune, then Chargers veteran Titan Antonio Gates spoke up and encouraged Bosa to be a man and put the pen to the paper. Sometimes you just got to, as a man, you've got to step in and say, this is what it's going to be. Because sometimes, whether or not there is miscommunication with the general manager or the agent, whatever it is, at the end of the day, it's it's your life, it's your career. Two weeks before the regular season, the Chargers and Bosa finally agreed to a four-year rookie contract. I wonder if Gates' choice words had anything to do with it. Number 9. Adam Thielen criticizes Kirk Cousins' deep ball Minnesota Vikings wide receiver Adam Thielen was frustrated with quarterback Kirk Cousins following an ugly 16-6 Week 4 road loss to the Chicago Bears in 2019. But Thielen only had two receptions for six yards in the contest, and he didn't hold back from voicing displeasure with the $84 million man under center. You're not going to be able to run the ball for 180 yards, um, even with the best running back in the NFL. Um, and, and that's when you have to be able to throw the ball. You have to be able to make plays. Um, you have to be able to um, you know, hit the ball, the deep balls. You have to do that because otherwise it's too easy for teams to just tee up and, and rush the quarterback. I mean, the Vikings only had 40 rushing yards in the contest, so Thielen was kind of onto something here. Hey, guess what? Thielen's constructive criticism actually worked. Later on that season, in overtime of the Vikings' wildcard game against the Saints, Cousins hit Thielen for a 43-yard catch to set up Kyle Rudolph's game-winning touchdown. Thielen wasn't being a jerk by any means. He was just offering Cousins some useful advice. Number 8. Baker Mayfield on Miles Garrett The Steelers-Brown Week 11 Thursday Night Contest from 2019 marked one of the ugliest nights in NFL history. An altercation between Miles Garrett and several Steelers quickly got out of hand. Garrett ripped off Mason Rudolph's helmet and proceeded to smack it across his head, leading to an ejection. Thankfully, Rudolph managed to avoid serious injury. The brawl between the two sides continued for several moments before officials restrained everybody. In his post-game interview, Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield had no interest in defending his own teammates' brutal actions. I didn't see why it started, um, but it's inexcusable. Uh, it, you know, I don't care rivalry or not, uh, we can't do that. Uh, it's, that's kind of the history uh, of you know what's been going on here lately, hurting yourself, and that's just endangering the other team. Uh, it's inexcusable. He knows that. Um, I hope he does now. It's just it's tough. Uh, um, We'll see. Garrett was suspended for the remainder of the season and reinstated for 2020. Number 7. Odell Beckham Jr. calls out Eli Manning. Consider this one a case of foreshadowing, if you will. Before the 2018 season, the New York Giants handed superstar wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. a massive five-year contract extension worth $95 million. Despite the new deal, rumors of a potential OBJ blockbuster trade popped up during and after the 2018 campaign. Well, Beckham kinda sorta offered some foreshadowing when he openly criticized quarterback Eli Manning during their losing campaign in 2018. In an interview with ESPN's Josina Anderson, Beckham was asked if there was an issue with the two-time Super Bowl MVP. OBJ, never afraid to express his feelings, had no problem critiquing his teammates' performance. Do you have an issue at quarterback then? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I feel like he he's not going to get out the pocket. He's not. We, we know Eli's not running. But is it a matter of time issue? Can, can he still throw it? And it's been, you know, cool catching a shallow and trying to take it to the house. But I'm, you know, I want to, I want to go over the top of somebody. I want to, I feel like in the past five years, 
they found a way to, to run a cover two, keep everything in front, and that's how they play me. And there's no there's no way to how do we beat this? You know, I feel like I'm being out schemed and then I also don't have a chance to like do something or I gotta take a slant and go sixty. Well, Beckham wound up getting traded to the Cleveland Browns in the ensuing offseason. But the Giants front office apparently agreed with some of OBJ's words because they drafted Eli's successor, Daniel Jones, with the number six selection in the 2019 draft. Number six, Jalen Ramsey blames Taylor Rapp. The Los Angeles Rams were close to upsetting the San Francisco 49ers in week 16 of the 2019 season. But with the game tied 31 apiece after the two minute warning, the Rams inexplicably allowed a pair of third and 16 conversions. On the second one, Emmanuel Sanders burst past the Rams secondary for a 46 yard catch. Robbie Gould then booted the game winning 33 yard field goal as time expired to seal the win for the 49ers. After the game, outspoken Rams cornerback Jalen Ramsey wasted no time pointing the finger at rookie Taylor Rapp for botching the coverage. He was in a form of two man. I played my technique, trusting that he was going to be over top. He went. That's what happened. Even Rapp acknowledged that he could have done a better job and gotten over the top. So at least he owned up to it. Number five, Martavius Bryant thinks he's better than Juju Smith-Schuster. After productive rookie and sophomore campaigns, wide receiver Martavius Bryant figured to play a prominent long-term role in the Pittsburgh Steelers' offense. But the Clemson product saw his role reduced in the 2017 season, due in large part to the strong play of rookie wideout Juju Smith-Schuster. And a source told ESPN that Bryant wanted out. Well, Bryant didn't exactly do much to shut down those trade rumors. If anything, he only added more juice to the speculation. While responding to an Instagram post, Bryant shared the following comment which was quickly deleted. Bryant later walked back on those words and complimented Smith Schuster as a great talent, emphasizing that he just wanted to get his chance. He was traded to the Oakland Raiders in the ensuing offseason, but they released Bryant before the start of the season. By the way, Smith Schuster was named the Steelers team MVP in the 2018 season. So uh, there's a strong case to be made that he actually is a better receiver than Bryant. Number four. J.J. Watt isn't happy with Ross Blacklock. The Houston Texans were one of the NFL's biggest disappointments in the 2020 season. The DeAndre Hopkins trade was as one-sided as everybody expected it to be. Head coach and de facto GM Bill O'Brien was fired following a miserable 0-4 start amid reports that he had clashed with several players. Franchise star J.J. Watt was apparently one of those players who got into a heated exchange with O'Brien throwing in a careless rookie mistake by Ross Blacklock, and you can only imagine the amount of frustration that Watts had to endure throughout the year. Blacklock was ejected late in the fourth quarter of the Texans' Week 2 home game against the Baltimore Ravens for throwing a punch. Following Houston's 33-16 loss, Watt didn't mince words when speaking about Blacklock's selfish actions. Stupid. It was selfish. It was, it was a stupid play. It was selfish. Um, it's something I mean, I've, I've spoken to Ross before, and so it, it pisses me off. I mean, it's a very selfish move late in the game, um, and it, it, it's dumb, very dumb to hurt your team in that type of setting for, for no reason. Tell us how you really feel, JJ. Number three, Ben Roethlisberger rips James Washington and Antonio Brown. Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger wasn't the least bit pleased with his team's mistake-filled Week 12 2018 road loss to a struggling Denver Broncos team. Roethlisberger threw a game-sealing interception into the end zone, but miscommunication with his receivers and fumbling issues didn't help matters. After the loss, the Steelers quarterback openly criticized Antonio Brown and James Washington during an appearance on 93.7 FM radio. A costly drop in the game by Washington, who was a rookie at the time, led to some harsh words from Roethlisberger. He has to make it. I just don't think he didn't trust his hands. For some reason, he jumped slash dove. I'm not really sure what he was doing. We look at it on film and coach got on him pretty good yesterday. Roethlisberger also pointed the finger at his superstar receiver for failing to run the proper route on the play that resulted in the game ceiling interception. A month later, Brown had a heated exchange with Big Ben at practice, walked out, and never played for the team again. Roethlisberger later expressed regret over the comments, noting that it ruined the friendship. Number two, Peyton Manning and Mike Vanderjack exchange verbal jabs. The Indianapolis Colts were angry and frustrated enough following a humiliating 41-0 shutout loss to the New York Jets in the 2002 AFC wildcard round. 
But kicker Mike Vanderjack added more salt to the wound when he publicly criticized quarterback Peyton Manning and head coach Tony Dungy. During an interview with The Score in Toronto, Vanderjack questioned Manning's leadership and criticized Dungy for lacking emotion, referring to him as a mild-mannered guy. He stressed pessimism about the Colts' future, and Manning didn't take the words kindly. Manning was asked about Vanderjack's comments in the 2003 Pro Bowl, and let's just say that Manning, known for his usually calm and easygoing demeanor, shared even harsher words than Vanderjack. We're talking about our idiot kicker who got liquored up and ran his mouth off. We're talking about idiot kickers. He has ruined kickers for life. Well, the next interaction between the two must have been awkward. If he is still a teammate, we'll deal with it. But the sad thing is, Lynn, he's a good kicker. He's a good kicker, but he's an idiot. Number one, Terrell Owens on Donovan McNabb. Owens was seemingly more willing to publicly criticize his teammates than anybody else in NFL history. Owens and quarterback Jeff Garcia were teammates in San Francisco for five years from 1999 to 2003, forming one of the league's top QB wide receiver duos. But Owens' relationship with his teammate quickly waned, which led to a trade to the Philadelphia Eagles in 2004. In an appearance on HBO's Inside the NFL, Owens suggested that he could have had better stats as a 49er if he had somebody like Donovan McNabb as his quarterback. Garcia threw the ball behind me, out of bounds. I left a lot of touchdowns on the field throughout the last two or three years. Well, the Owens-McNabb relationship wasn't that much better, even though they led the Eagles to a Super Bowl 39 appearance, where they fell to the New England Patriots 24-21. Unhappy with his contract situation during the offseason, Owens took a clear shot at McNabb by stating he wasn't the only one who got tired in the Super Bowl, seemingly referring to the quarterback's sluggish demeanor in the team's poor clock management management late in the game. During the 2005 season, Owens expressed agreement with comments from Michael Irvin that the Eagles would be undefeated if Brett Favre was the team's quarterback, and that the team would, quote, probably be in a better situation. The Eagles suspended Owens for conduct detrimental to the team as his antics started to wear on the organization. He was released in the ensuing offseason, before signing with the NFC East rival Dallas Cowboys. Just some good old T.O. trash talk. Love him or hate him, the dude was always must-watch TV during his playing career. But what other NFL players have trashed their own teammate publicly? Join us in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.